to the City Newsroom on City TV. We are also live on DSTV Channel 363. My name is Freeman Dunyame. And my name is Nana Tufuobuate. Coming up. Faith-based organizations split on holding of congregational services despite easing of restrictions on social gathering. As quickly as possible. But we also feel that for us, again for us we are not ready yet and so once we are able to know that logistically we are ready it makes sense to gather all of them or to gather people into this space we will mixed reactions from stakeholders in the education sector of a government's decision to reopen schools for final year students testing them <laughs> will be very happy even the teachers and then the students as well so that at least we will know the, the, the status of every student or teacher. Also coming up, Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research warns the center may struggle to release results in real time if there is an increase in COVID-19 cases following the ease in restrictions. As people are moving out and then we keep easing these activities, there is a possibility that some people may not entirely adhere to these measures and therefore the number of cases may go up. President Okufuado has announced the progressive easing of restrictions on social gatherings. Now, uh, per the directives announced by the president, uh, Muslims as well as Christians can begin to hold services, but under strict uh, adherence to other directives that he put out, including limiting numbers to 100 people and worshipping within a time space of one hour. We want to understand how the various uh, stakeholders appreciate these directives and how they hope to implement them. We're starting off on this edition of the City Newsroom with the Muslims who, per the directives, can begin prayers or congregational prayers from Friday, the 5th of June, 2020. And so we are starting from the Hajia Miriam Ajwa Meimasara Mosque uh, here off the Kanda Highway. And we're going to speak uh, to the leadership of the mosque to find out what their thoughts are on this matter. We have the spokesperson for the mosque here and uh, we want to find out how they have received the news and then what preparations they have put in place ahead of uh, Friday, June 5, where the president has given clearance that in fact Muslims can congregate and observe their prayers. Hello and welcome to the City News. Welcome. Thank you, sir. So you, you may have heard the president and the directives he has given. Briefly, what are your thoughts on that? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, we thank God, we thank Almighty Allah for the, our president of the Republic of Ghana. I think God gives the president of the nation knowledge, that is what we call the hikmah, to give five days ahead of what he says. What our president says means that all the Muslims have to prepare their mosques. We can't just open our mosques for two months just like that to allow people to come in to, to pray. Inshallah, we have done meeting here and we succeed our mission. We talked to our chairman and then our imam that this is what the president says. We allowed 100 people to start prayer in the mosque. And then it means we have to bring intervals among our people to start prayers on Friday. And inshallah, the committee, chairman, and then the organizer with the imam, we decided to bring the bucket with water and then the soap, sanitizer, through the side, the doors of the mosque, because we want our people to become into the mosque with their abolition, with the sanitizer, everything, inshallah. And then we talk 
about this uh, into our ideas. Everybody that you're supposed to come to our mosque, you have to hold sajada. Sajada is one man, one seat. So if you are coming with it, then you come and put it on your side. You pray on it. Even this, after we finish our meeting, we went to our sprayer, the one that will come and put medicine and spray the whole mosque. He charges us his money. We pay him. We give him his full money that he's supposed to come and do it on Thursday night because we wash the mocks on Wednesday. And then Thursday, he will come and spray the whole mocks because we don't know that where the sickness is. So the whole, both and the men and the female side will wash all the places and spray it, inshallah, on Thursday before Friday morning, we're beginning our prayers on the mocks. Time are you starting prayers on Friday? Yeah, inshallah, our prayers will begin on 12:30. The Imam will start the Utbah, and we talk our chief Imam. At least we cannot make the Utbah more than 20 minutes. The Utbah will be short, 15 minutes, and we take the five minutes to pray. Then everybody will go his way. Some individual churches have issued communications uh, to their members that uh, although they agree with the partial easing of the restrictions, they will not be holding uh, services for their members because they want to ensure the safety of these members. One of these churches is the Maker's House Chapel International. Let's go there and speak to the authorities there to find out what informed such a decision. Let's welcome Dr. Michael Buadinya Meche and engage him, of course, on uh, these directives, how they have been received, and of course, what his thoughts are. Hello and welcome to the City News. Thank you, sir. Right. So, on a typical Sunday, how many congregants are we in here? Um, this space itself sits about 5,000 people. And so, on a typical Sunday, if you're having a full service that's the number of people you are expecting to have so these directives are announced by the president first of all how are you receiving this and then going forward what are your thoughts and how are you hoping to go by them I think it's a very good thing the churches need to be opened I strongly believe they need to be open I believe it's a prophetic engagement or a prophetic statement from the leader of the state i believe that through consultations he's been able to come out with the fact that the faith-based organizations You're still watching the City Newsroom on City TV. We'll be right back with more. Do stay. Unlimited calls. Not just that. Even our extra data doesn't expire. Speedy fill up. Simply dial star one 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 hash to bundle now. Airtel to go. Life is simple. To all the moms and dads out there, we are bringing school to the radio. Parents, the Ministry of Education, the Ghana Education Service.
GBC and USAID are starting an exciting new radio education program to help your child to continue learning to read at home. It is the Ghana Learning Radio, the reading program. Beginning 15th June 2020, some of your favorite primary school teachers will take you and your child through exciting, interactive, and easy-to-follow radio lessons that will contain stories, interactive games, riddles, and humorous characters. We are planning two sessions of reading for B1 to B3 for your child from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays with repeats on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from 4 to 5 p.m. Think of it as school on the radio. the fun june 15 10 30 a.m on all g read to learn this message is brought to you by the ministry of education ges gbc and usaid Businesses are evolving with the changing times and the City Business Festival is doing the same. In the month of June, City Business Festival goes digital. City TV in collaboration with Absa Bank will give SMEs the opportunity to reboot their businesses with expert forums, discussion platforms and interactive Zoom sessions. There will be a lesson for every business. Gain insight into the e-commerce ecosystem, understand the tools and applications that are redefining work and get a head start into the export market and agribusiness. Revamp your business and work environment this June with City TV. The City Business Festival starts on the 1st of June, 2020. The City Business Festival is sponsored by Absa Bank and supported by the Ghana Investment Promotion Center. People are opening doors for me or driving for me or giving me a huge respect not for me for Shani Cooper not to Shani Cooper is the respect the respect is for the state of Israel one day I was in Quebec <laughs> a vacation with my cousin and someone calls me from Brazil saying do you want to be ambassador in Ghana <laughs> I said yes, yes I do <laughs> Welcome back to the City Newsroom. Let's take you back to our earlier story where we get some perspectives as to what religious bodies are doing in response to the directives issued by President Kufuado, uh, easing some of the restrictions uh, associated or occasioned by COVID-19. Michael Bwadinya Miche, and engage him, of course, on... Uh, these directives how they have been received and of course what his thoughts are hello and welcome to the city newsroom thank you sir right so on a typical sunday how many congregants are we in here um this space itself sits about five thousand people and so on a typical sunday if you're having a full service that's the number of people you are expecting to have so these directives are announced by the president first of all how are you receiving this and then going forward what are your thoughts and how are you hoping to go by them i think it's a very good thing the churches need to be opened i strongly believe they need to be open i believe it's a prophetic engagement or a prophetic statement from the leader of the state i believe that through consultations he's been able to come out with the fact that the faith-based organizations
Leaders of Mos in Kumasi have begun mapping out strategies to ensure Muslims okay. adhere strictly to safety protocols ahead of reopening of mosques on Friday. Well, the Council of Ulama and Imams has begun stakeholder engagements and is expected to meet a leadership of various Islamic sects before Friday. Now, the engagements have largely focused on how to implement protocols at the mosque and get worshippers adhere to them. City News' is Ashanti Regional Correspondent Hafiz Tijani has more. COVID-19 restrictions have over the past months made it impossible for Muslims to observe prayers in congregation. The Friday prayers, one of the essential prayers which is done with a large group of worshippers, were suspended due to the restrictions. Muslim leaders have described as good news the announcement by President Akufuado for mocks to reopen. Welcome news to the Muslim Umar in Ghana. In fact, as well as beyond, we are very happy when the president pronounced that, you know, Juma will start operating on Friday, the 5th of June. Well, we are very, very grateful to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, that graciously has announced that from the 5th of June, the mosques and churches are open with some of the restrictions. The Ahmadiyya mosque, located at Asafo in Kumase, has the capacity to take over 1,000 worshippers. Mulvi Abdul Hamid Tahir explains what will be done to ensure worshippers do not exceed 100. Holy Prophet said that wherever there are even three believers, three, one can lead Juma and two they can follow. It's not necessary the way our people, they think that there should be a large gathering and mosque before you offer Juma. So we have no problem. We will not, meantime, we, we, we will request from our ladies not to come to the mosque. Children, they should not come to the mosque. Above 60, they should not come to the mosque. That is the first thing. The remaining one, wherever we have mosque, like we have a mosque here in Asafu, we have mosque, a big mosque in Afurikurum, we have mosque at Otonsu, we have mosque at uh, Tafu, we have mosque at Aumasu, Bwadi. Wherever we have mosque, instead of coming here, they should offer Juma in their own mosque. Each and everybody have mosque. And we will also try to get some in the mosque. Those they will come without, we will not allow them to enter without mask in the mosque. The Council of Ulama and Imams in the Ashanti region has begun wider engagements to get all Muslims fall in line. Firstly, we have to look into the how are we going to maintain you know, the social distance that he, he said, that one meter social distance. You know, normally, when we are praying, we stand shoulder by shoulder. So we have to see how best we can distance ourselves, one, and then sanitizing ourselves before entering the mosque, washing our hands, so that we have to place some, you know, let some people, means something like a tax force that will look into the whole issue so that we... Well, we apologize for that earlier technical hitch. Let's move on to some other stories. And President Kufuado's decision to reopen schools for final year students have been met with mixed reactions. Now, while some players in the educational sector are demanding mass testing of teachers and students, the Others want provision of needed materials to aid in adherence to COVID-19 protocols. The University Students Association of Ghana are, however, kicking against the decision. City News' Hansen Ajaman has the rest of the story. On 22nd June this year, senior high schools will receive their final year students. For the final year students of the senior high schools, they are expected to use this period to take their exit examinations one beneficiary of this particular intervention from the president is Ido College. They run a normal SHS school routine system and also a remedial school. So we are here to interrogate some of the actions that government is demanding from stakeholders to ensure that we protect students as they return to school. We are currently here at Ido College, quite empty. I will be joined by 
an authority of the school to take us around to look at their classrooms. How are you receiving the news by the president that uh, final year students can't come to school? It's a good news, uh, but honestly, it's no news. We, we had a privilege and the opportunity to present a proposal to, to government. Ghana Education Service demanded a proposal, and uh, being part of the national body of uh, uh, private schools, we were part of the team that submitted a proposal. And the very things we, we, we bargained. Go to look at your preparations. Private schools were complaining of some challenges during these restriction period. Does this solve the problem in any way? Oh, ideally, it does, it does not really solve the problem of the challenges that uh, private schools were, were lamenting uh, prior to the, the, the lifting of these restrictions, because it has to do with payment of salaries and all those ones. But of course, we have been uh, uh, asked to try and assess the stimulus package that has been made available by the, by the government, and that's what we are still working on. How many students do you have in total here? In total, final year student, we are talking about almost 500 students here ready for the WASI as we speak. The government is saying that we should have 25 persons per classroom. Let's get to, under, to see whether or not you can accommodate this with the 600 people you're talking about. Yes. Which classroom are we in? So we are in one of the remedial classrooms right here. And ideally, this class alone, if we decide to use a mono desk, can, can take about 60. If you're using a double desk, you can take about 100 students. So what is this arrangement for? Or you did it before well, school? Well, we just did it before. Just, that was the moment we were taking examination. This is how the setup is when we are even having examination. How many people would you think this class would take? Ideally, we don't want any class to take something more than 30 at the moment. That's what we are looking at. Yes, we have such large classes that even when you decide to put the distancing protocols, whatever, in place, you can even take like 50 and everybody will be comfortable where we have decided that we don't want any class, no matter how large it is, to take more than 30. And that's what we are going to look at it. And we have even other classes that are equally larger than this one, but we still want to maintain the 30 for now. What things do we have to put in place to make this work? I've just always indicated and made it so clear that um, the whole protocol should not be something too rigid. When a student comes, let's try and make it very flexible for them, you understand? Let them feel it's part and parcel of the system. We are crafting uh, more or less a new timetable where we are going to make it very lively. What we are doing is that, um, as for no mask is compulsory, no mask, no entry. Parents are supposed to provide their walls with a nose mask, at least a pocket size hand sanitizer. When a teacher is teaching, we have already told them we are having another orientation within the week. At least every 15 minutes pause, and he asks them what time is it, we say it's hand sanitizer time. Let it become part of like a ritual. Everybody, including the teacher there, you, hand, you sanitize your hands. You would give them the education, but what can we do to them if they break these rules? We are getting parents equally on board that this is life-threatening. Anybody who is not able to conform, the best is you go and stay home. And it's as simple as that. Write a wasi. We can't stop you from writing wasi, just as we do. There are people that when, when they, they, they break some rules, we have the right to suspend them. You don't have the right to stop them from writing to wasi. When it's time for wasi, you come from the house, you come and write. And that's fixed invigilation and supervision. You have it all sorted for the classrooms. You also run a boarding facility. So we're going to check your boarding facility to see how well you're going to ensure that there'll be social distancing and when the students come, they are safe. The president didn't talk about boarding facilities, but if you get the import of his statement, it suggests that we should work towards reducing the numbers. Have you thought about it? That's what we have done and what we are saying is that instead of still maintaining the eight in a room, we are going to maintain four in a room. So we are reducing the number from eight to four. Um, ideally, you see that it's, there are bank beds, so one is up, one is down. We've decided that we give one to each person. Are all your rooms eight in a room? Mm -hmm. So we have eight in the room and we have 12 in the room. So the largest is 12 in the room. Yeah, and we, have, we even have six in the room at the point. So all the rooms that have that numbers, if it's 12 in the room, we are cutting it down to like eight in the room. Six in the room is coming down like three in the room. Then we have eight in the room coming down like four in the room. It's been more than two months since this classroom, GHS 3B, 
was locked because of the closure of schools as a result of the COVID-19 restrictions. On June 29, students of this school and of this class at the Osu Presby class of schools will be able to return to school. We are here to speak to the headmistress of this school and look at what exactly she makes of the lifting of the restrictions and what can be done to make sure that we don't get a spike in the cases when uh, these students finally return. Yesterday, we all heard from the president and we are hoping by 29th of this month they will come so that school will start. How many students do you have in, in final year? Mm, with the JHS3, we are 74. I'm looking at the number, according to the president, we want to bring it down because we have enough classrooms, maybe 25 in the class or 20, 22. What do you think will be your major challenge? Um, our major challenge is the very bucket. We don't have enough. What we have, some of them have broken down. But we are praying that maybe other people will support us. Would they be allowed to play during break time? Uh, playing will be very difficult because, as I've already told you, they are grown-ups. So they know the implications of it. So I don't think they will be playing because they know we need to distance ourselves. Uh -huh. So we, the teachers, will be checking on them. There are those who are saying that we don't know where the teachers have been. We don't know where the students have been. Mm -hmm. Let us have some testing for those who are returning. It will be very, 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 very good to do that because we don't know where they've been. So testing them will be very happy, even the teachers and then the students as well, so that at least we will know the, the, the status of every student or teacher. Is this something you'll be expecting to see in the guidelines to be released by the yes, Ministry of Yes, that, that is what I'm expecting. At least to start with the final year students. The government will be providing reusable nose marks. How are you going to ensure that students don't wear one nose mask for a week without washing it? <laughs> that job, it will be very difficult. So we are going to involve the parents because they are there with them in the house. So we are going to involve them that they wash it every day after they've closed. So we are going to involve the parents. Thank you very much. So universities have also been opened. The final year students are to report on the 15th of June. The body that represents students at the university level, USAC, is kicking against the president decision. Let's take a look at what they have to say about this. USAC's position is just one, and then our position is that we are against uh, government opening school for especially final year university students because if we believe that the degree is an accumulation of the semester exams for every student, regardless level 100 to 400. Hence, there's the, 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 the same importance that the level 100 can give to the final year exams is the same thing that the final year also gives the final year semester exams. So there's no there's nothing like an exit uh, final exams that happens in probably the basic school and then the senior high school. Hence, we feel like it's a very wrong call to have final year university students come to the university based on that assumption that they come to write the final exit exams. Let's bring you some more stories. And with the easing of restrictions on social and religious gatherings by President Kufuado, a virologist at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research into Tropical Medicine, Dr. Michael Owusu, is warning of a possible hike in cases that could overwhelm their testing center. He's thus calling on government to set up more testing centers and equip already existing ones with needed equipment to increase their capacity. City News' Eduardo Pomafo has more. President Akufuado, in his tenth address to the nation, eased the restrictions imposed on social and religious gatherings. For a researcher at the Kumasi Center for Collaborative Research into Tropical Medicine (KCCR), Dr. Michael Usu, who has been working on coronaviruses for over a decade, this could cause a surge in COVID-19 cases in the country. So once people are moving out, and then you keep easing 
these activities there is a possibility that some people may not entirely adhere to these uh, measures and therefore the number of cases may go up so uh, it's not surprising and as i said increasing infections uh, is something we have to live with he wants government to support various testing centers to boost their capacity he's also calling for other testing centers to be established to test as many samples as possible in case there's a surge in cases he adds that government should fast track processes on getting rapid diagnostic tests ready to augment the already existing testing regime i think that the testing capacity is still low for me and i will wish that once the restriction easing has started we should also gradually increase the number of testing sites and supply more regions so that once there are surges this can be managed i think that with the testing capacity we have now we are still limited and it's possible when the surges happen we may not be able to um, uh, test these populations. I think this is where we have to focus our attention. The director of the center, Professor Richard Odami Phillips, insists that the center currently is not overwhelmed as they are able to test about 30,000 samples in a month. He believes that there will not be a surge in cases once people comply with all COVID-19 safety protocols. We need to develop approaches to living with it and making sure that we don't get down with the virus. And so that's why there's the encouragement to continue to observe all the protocols for infection prevention and to wear our face masks and to keep washing our hands because at a point people could, fatigue could set in. Now, there have been mixed reactions among residents of the Tamale metropolis to the president's decision to ease restrictions on social and religious gatherings. Even though the residents are happy for the ease in restrictions, they fear there could be a spike in the number of coronavirus cases in the region. President Akufuado, in his 10th address on Sunday night, among other things, eased restrictions on the reopening of schools, social and religious gatherings. However, Residents of Tamale believe security officials will have a tough time implementing these directives. Even before the president's announcement, authorities in Tamale have largely failed to enforce the directive on public gathering in markets across the metropolis. Some residents who have been speaking to City News expressed concern about compliance of the new directives and a possible spike in coronavirus cases. Yo, we've heard from the government is wanting. Yo, we are doing the sayings of the government is another thing. So I would have preferred that at least security and other agencies come into the support of ensuring that each and every Ghanaian populace have the nose marks. We, we are just like students. What they say we should not do in the school is what we want to try. But religious leaders say Educate measures have been put in place to ensure strict adherence to the protocols to contain any possible spread. We must place the worshippers in a way that we observe the social distancing and that we put in place the measures like the possibility to wash their hands before they enter the church and after they enter the church and uh, also to restrict them from handshaking even within the church. There are restrictions still go, to go on with. There are certain regulations. We know very well that we must all obey and follow it as sensible human beings. One, the social distancing or physical distancing, I call. We must obey it and abide by it. And not only that, when getting to the mocks also, we, we have I mean, water to be uh, placed with soap, running water, we wash our hands, sanitizers also available, we'll get ourselves prepared fully before entering the mocks. A former chief of defense staff, Brigadier General Joseph Nunu Mensah, is calling for support for the Electoral Commission as it moves to compile a new voters' register. The exercise, which will begin this month, has been strongly opposed by some political parties, including the National Democratic Congress. Now, speaking to City News, Brigadier General Nunu Mensah said he believes the Electoral Commission will do a good job. The EC is an independent institution under the constitution 
And nobody has the power to interfere with their work. Even the president cannot do that. But the way we are harassing the EC boss, harassing the EC institution, I fear that if this doesn't stop, it doesn't stop, and the EC are allowed to do their work as they know better, we might end up having problems on our hand. I have full election in other parts of the world. I, I was in Britain years ago and I voted there. I was registered and then voted with my daughter. But the intensity of the occasion wasn't like in Ghana here. And I wonder why we take elections so seriously. To the point of even killing and maiming, as happened in Ayawa, so West Wogan by election. I think that we're going too far. And if we didn't take care to pull back, we might push not only the EC, but the whole nation into chaos if we don't take care. The Opposition National Democratic Congress, NDC, wants the Auditor General to conduct a special audit into the 200 million Ghana cities allocated for the provision of water, electricity and food for the vulnerable under the COVID-19 alleviation program. The government absorbed the electricity bills of all lifetime consumers for three months beginning April. At a press briefing in Accra today, the party also demanded a detailed audit of 40 million CDs allocated to the National Buffer Stock Company. In his fifth address to the nation, President Akufuado announced that the government would absorb the water bill for citizens for three months, spanning from April to June. Free meals and other essentials were also provided daily to more than 400,000 vulnerable and needy people during the lockdown. The opposition NDC, which suspects misappropriation of funds allocated for the elevation programs, called for a special audit. The party wants the Auditor General to audit the 200 million cities allocated for the provision of water and food for the vulnerable in the wake of COVID-19. Kessel Atuforsen is MP for Ejumako Enyanesian and ranking member for Parliament Finance Committee. We are demanding a special audit into the expenditure of the following three items. Number one, we are asking that the amount of 40 million Ghana cities which was allocated for the procurement and distribution of food packages and hot meals to the vulnerable in the lockdown areas be investigated. We are also calling on the Auditor General that the amount of 40.3 million Ghana cities which was allocated for the Ghana National Buffer Stocks Company for the procurement and distribution of dry food to the vulnerable in the lockdown areas will also be investigated. Again, we are saying that the amount of 200 million Ghana cities allocated for the provision of water and sanitation, especially the amount spent on the supply of tankers of water to deprive households be investigated. The minority chief whip, Muntaka Mubarak, who spoke at the press briefing, accused the government of disbursing less than $8 million to all the 275 constituencies. This is in contrast to the government's claims to have spent a million dollars each under the one million per constituency policy. He described the one million per constituency program as another failed promise. This part which exposes the dishonesty of the current the Nanado Baumia government applies to almost all the campaign promises of the president Nanado and his vice uh, Dr. Baumia and the MPP. We shall demonstrate this fact with disputable evidence in our subsequent briefing. The Simbish friends talk they say is cheap. You can lie your way to power, but the truth will take you back to opposition. The president, in announcing the lifting of the COVID-19 restrictions on the country on Sunday, said churches and mosques could hold activities but with about 100 persons in attendance. He, among other things, lifted restrictions on political activities but still banned political rallies. The president also urged the Electoral Commission and the National Identification Authority to conduct their registration activities but adhere to COVID-19 safety protocols. The NBC, however, contends that the decision was motivated by the president's unflinching quest to see a new voters register compiled for the next elections. Sami Jemfi is the NDC's national communications officer. It is very clear 
that the easing of restrictions was motivated by the president's parochial political interest and not the national interest. The fact that church and mosque gatherings are not supposed to have more than 100 people in attendance and are supposed to last for just an hour. But the NIA and the Electoral Commission have been given the freedom and the carte blanche to register an unlimited number of people from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. That's 10 hours. Shows clearly that the so-called partial reopening of churches, mosques, and schools was only a ruse to the president's main agenda. My name is Kojo Achman reporting for City News. Public Policy Analysis and Media Training Center of the Dankwa Institute has backed plans by the Electoral Commission to embark on a fresh voter registration exercise ahead of the 2020 general elections. Now, according to the Institute, the 2012 voters' register is fraught with illegalities, hence the need for a new one. Addressing the media in Accra, Executive Director of the Institute, Richard Ahiagba, said a new credible voters' register will strengthen Ghana's democracy. The move by the EC to compile a new voters' register prior to the general elections in December has over time generated much controversy with some parties and groups disagreeing to the plan. However, the EC has presented a constitutional instrument to Parliament to make Ghana card or passport acceptable document for registration onto the voters' register. According to the Dankwa Institute, this exercise should have been embarked on long ago by the EC to read the current voters' register of all irregularities. It is our considered opinion or our considered position that in the voter register of 2012 compiled under CI 72 does not reasonably and accurately identify who a Ghanaian is and that the EC's processes to compile the register were fraught with illegalities and disorderliness in its data collection approach. This register ought to be replaced, ought to have been replaced in 2014 or 2016. The Institute blamed the numerous controversies surrounding the EC's attempt to compile a new register on its failure to communicate to Ghanaians the legal backing to its move. The EC must be forthright and decisive in its approach and processes. We find the EC's public education and rationalization as a major reason why some Ghanaians are worried and skeptical about the compilation of a new voters register. Executive Director of the Dankwa Institute, Richard Anyagba, urged the Electoral Commission to evaluate concerns raised by civil society organizations and other groups for a consensus on the compilation of the new voters register. We believe the EC can achieve consensus with all interest groups to engage the consent to engage the concerns about cost, procurement, technical concerns, time and COVID-19 as part of the EC's process to compile a new register. Reporting from the Dankwa Institute here in Accra, Amni Ayukwe Okain, for City News. You're watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Still ahead, President Takufuado calls on the U.S. to change its approach in tackling racism following the killing of George Floyd. Meanwhile, some African Americans living in Ghana petitioned the American Embassy over the matter. Details coming up after this break. Don't go away.
79,000 US dollars only to buy you a studio apartment in Accra. Why not come to Wedi for a spacious two bedroom apartment at Alphabet City, our brand new gated community situated right on top of the serene Sakumano Lagoon, feeling like splashing a little? Check out our exclusive all detached house gated community, the Jaden Symphonic next door. Sizes range from cozy three bedrooms to luxurious five bedrooms. We at Wedi are committed to provide you with the best building quality and value for money. In fact, we are the proud recipient of 2019's Quality Property Firm Award. Just like our homes, our payment terms focus on your needs. Choose from installment up to 24 months or take advantage of mortgage up to 20 years. At Waylead, we build home for you. Call us now at 0240-111119 or 0504-499999 to secure your dream home now. Thank you, sir. Hello, my name is Samuel Fori, a film actor and a film director. Because of the nature of my job, the taste for quality things is endless. Quality phones, quality laptops, quality TV sets. Let me show you my secret. Here is Franco Trading Enterprise. My secret for quality laptops, quality phones, Quality TV sets, accessories, come on, external hard drive, pen drive, name it. For book purchase and retails, come to Franco Trading Enterprise. They will reduce the price for you. Franco Trading Enterprise, home quality phones. Ghana's President Nanado Dankwa Akufuado has called on the United States of America to use the killing of George Floyd to change how the nation confronts issues of racism. The late George Floyd, an African American, was killed by a police officer in the full glare of three other officers in Minnesota in the United States of America on May 25, 2020. The issue has sparked protest in the U.S. Now, President Akufado in a Facebook post said, We stand with our Keith and Ken in America in these difficult and trying times, and we hope that the unfortunate tragic death of George Floyd will inspire a lasting change in how America confronts head on the problems of hate and racism. Meanwhile, a group of African Americans living in Ghana, the Diaspora Coalition, has petitioned the American Embassy in Ghana over recent cases of police brutality and racial discrimination against Africans and people of black descent in the United States of America. Now, the coalition says it is disgusted by developments in the U.S. and so scores of people converged at the Du Bois Center in Accra to drum home their displeasure. The world needs to know this. It's not a conspiracy. The protesters, made up of mostly African Americans, were clad in black attire with red handbands and gathered at the Du Bois Center in Accra. They had support from some Ghanaians on a march to the American Embassy to present a petition to the ambassador over rampant police brutality and racial discrimination against people of African descent in America. Addressing the protesters, convener of the Universal Pan-African Diaspora Coalition in Ghana, Rabbi Kohen Hahevi, said they were fed up with the turnout of events in the U.S. America is used to handling her problems as a domestic affair, and we're letting her know this is an international affair, and the international community is looking at America for the first time for these atrocities. People look up to America for leadership, leadership in democracy, leadership in human rights, leadership in principles but that role is waning and she has to redeem her image if she is to survive as a role model to the global world the fury of the diasporans has been rekindled by the recent brutal killing of george floyd a 46 year old african-american male 
who died at the hands of a white police officer in May this month, while his other colleagues looked on. His killing has spread waves of anger among the black community in the United States, resulting in a nationwide protest with many calling for the immediate prosecution of the officers involved. We're calling for a reset and we're saying that 400 years ago, what happened should not have happened. We are calling for the white supremacy system because it's not the people, it's a system that perpetuates this thing. And so we're calling for change of policy. Some of the people who took part in the match explained why they felt compelled to participate. It's worse than what we're being told. You see, this isn't a new thing. It's just that now everyone has a phone to record it. This has been going on since the dawn of America. The person for sitting this, I am not Now, the Minister of Chieftains and Religious Affairs, Samuel Kofi Jamasi, has stacked churches and mocks to form COVID-19 tax force. Now, the teams, according to him, will ensure strict compliance to the precautionary measures and protocols. President Takufado announced a review of the ban on social gathering in Ghana in a televised address on Sunday. Churches and schools are to resume partially under strict guidance. Now, churches are to allow only 100 congregants, while schools are to open for final year students with limited class sizes. Now, outlining some precautionary measures for religious bodies, and at a press briefing on Monday night, the Minister of Chieftaincy and Religious Affairs, Samuel Kofi Jamesi, explained that the easing of COVID-19 restrictions does not mean religious bodies are allowed to operate fully. Designate a body room or area where a person who becomes sick at the premises can be isolated from others while making arrangements for evacuation. Regular disinfection of venues used for most uh, gathering, preferably once every month. Professional cleaners, if the necessary personal protective equipment and cleaning items to clean the facilities regularly and handle waste appropriately. Provide adequate ventilation, that is, open windows to allow for the maximum circulation of fresh air. If possible, avoid confined air conditioned rooms. Display approved health promotion materials on COVID 19 advantage points to remind people to keep to social distancing protocols. Wearing of mask, regular hand washing, coughing, and sneezing etiquette. Ensure a no handshake, no hugging, and no spitting policy at all times. Follow established evacuation procedures to enable evacuation of a participant if a participant becomes sick during the event and has to be evacuated. Form COVID task force comprising of members who are preferably health workers. They must be trained in health promoting prevent, prevention measures, infection prevention and control, and evacuation procedures by Ghana Health Service. And that's how we wrap up. You've been watching the City Newsroom on City TV. Remember, our website, citynewsroom.com, has more information on our top stories and more. Subscribe to CityTube on YouTube for more exclusive video content from City TV. Download the City Newsroom app from the Google Play Store and keep updated on the go. You can also watch City TV on DSTV channel 363 and on Go TV channel 182. My name is Fremedu Nyame. And my name is Nanatu Fobwati. Many thanks for watching.